Are we good? Good. We're on. Dude, I am super fetching stoked, okay? Okay, see that thing in the red box right there? Okay? For a mathematician, that's sexy, okay? <laughs> For you, you're like, no, that's not sexy. But that's sexy right there. And let me tell you why. Because 20 years ago, I actually wrote this math book. 20 years ago, I wrote this math book. And there was some interest from, so basically, publishing companies will send their, you want me to be here? Publishing you companies, want to they send their uh, sales reps out to find out, you know, what book you're using each semester. See, if a sales rep can sell me on their book, they get hundreds of sales because I'm gonna make all my students buy their textbook, right? If they go to you, they get one sale at a time. They go to me, they can get hundreds. So I'm a great resource as a teacher for a book sales rep. Years ago, uh, they'd come around and knock on the doors. Well, one semester they came around and knocked on my door and they asked me, hey, what book are you gonna be using this next semester? And I said, I'm not gonna be using a book. And they're like, well, how do you not use a book? And I'm like, well, I'm gonna be using my own material. <gasps> do you want us to put you in touch with our editors? I'm like, no, I'm not done yet. You know, I, I wanted to have everything organized. Eventually I did wanna, you know, try to publish the book with some editors and, and, and some of the publishing companies. Well, one of them didn't listen to me. And he gave my number to his editor, okay? And this editor's name was Paul Murphy, and he worked for, okay, Prentice Hall, okay? And uh, Prentice Hall was huge back in the day. Prentice Hall and Addison Wesley, they, they actually merged, and now they're all under the umbrella of Pearson, Pearson Education. So if you look on the spine of most of your education books, it says Pearson on it. Paul Murphy flew all the way from Boston to Idaho Falls because he was so interested in what I was writing. And that was a big deal. It was a real feather in my cap. It was really cool. Somebody could be like, well, why didn't you ever publish this? So, I mean, if this is a true story, why didn't you make the money and do this, okay? Well, to be honest with you, that's a big story. But at the time, I had another business. And I was making six figures from that business. And I worked here at the college. And I, I had a number of children at the time. I don't know how many I had. I had like four or five at the time. And uh, I ended up with six total. But at the time, I had four or five. And you know, spending time with them was huge to me. And you know, this project would have required just an enormous amount of labor for a number of years before I saw any positive income from it. Maybe five to seven years. And I was like, you know, this isn't worth it right now. I'll do this later in my life. So, but one of the things that they loved was stuff like this, because this is kind of an overarching process that teaches you how to do everything. Right? It's really cool. So this is what you learn, and the rest of what we're doing is just examples today. Okay, and we're gonna have a lot of stuff in our book from here on out that's very much like this, but this is really cool. All right, I wanna talk about this. Who makes more money? Problem, and you can, you can move with me a little bit if you want to. Who makes more money? Problem solvers or problem identifiers? I want you to think about that for just a minute. Who makes more money? Problem solvers or problem identifiers? Okay, what do you think? Yeah? If you identify a problem, could you solve it so you make money result? You could, you could. But most of your problem identifiers are not going to go out and solve the problem. Yeah? Think of like a consultant because he's the one that usually identifies a problem with okay. the company. He's not necessarily the one who solves the problem, it's usually the boss, but the consultant gets the big bucks to identify what's the problem. So you think who makes the most money then? Who? The identifier. The identifier. Okay, who would agree? Raise your hand. All right, I'm impressed. Most semesters, most of my students think problem solvers make the most money. So we've had these really freezing temperatures, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't think God intended for humans to live in this country. I don't even know why we populated Rexburg. But, you know, this happens like once or twice a year where we hit these negative, you know, 20s and 30s. It's like, are you fetching kidding me? Okay. You know, I actually drove over to the Teton Basin the other day, and it was negative 51. That's just messed up. Okay? That's just messed up. All right. So, when we get these kind of big freezing temperatures, pipes burst sometimes. Yes? Okay, they freeze and burst. So let's say the other day when we were hitting negative 30 that the main line in Rexburg burst, okay? Let's, let's, let's see which, which one is the problem identifier, which one is the problem solver, okay? So we have an engineer, okay, working over at the city building, 
And this engineer, she pulls up all of the schematics of where all the lines go, all the water lines, and she locates exactly where the problem is, okay, and sends a team to go and fix the problem, okay. And then we have a gentleman who is running a crew, he's wearing his car hearts, he gets out there and he's got his excavator and he digs it uh, out the main line and gets down in there and, and starts, you know, putting all his pipe together, they're welding and they're, they're cutting and they're doing stuff, okay? Which one is the problem identifier? The person with the schematics. The, the person with the schematics, the engineer. That's the problem identifier. Which one's the problem solver? The Carhartt boy, right? Carhartt man, yeah? The guy in the, so who makes the most money? The engineer, right. So problem identification is a key to success in making money. And no math textbook emphasizes or teaches how to identify problems, but we do. And that's what's so powerful about what we're learning here, why this is so sexy to me, is that this is about problem identification, right? So let's talk about the first thing I taught you about problem identification, there's two types of problems in all of algebra, right? Two types of problems in all of algebra. What are they? Solve, solve and simplify. Solve and simplify. And what is the identifier that allows you to identify if it's solve or simplify? What's the identifier? Right, 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 right. So here's the deal. If you know that there's two types of problems in all of algebra, that's all great. But that doesn't help you identify it. It's the knowledge of the equal sign that makes you a problem identifier. Do you gather that? And that's where a lot of education fails you is that we'll teach you how to do things, in other words, how to come up with solutions, which is solving, but we don't teach you problem identification. See, I've told you that I coach women's basketball, and I can teach my girls, right? I can teach them how to play offense against a zone defense, and I can teach them how to play offense against a man defense. But what I really need them to do is when they're on the court, they need to be able to identify what the other team is doing to them on their own. They've got to be able to recognize, oh, they're throwing a 2-3 zone against us. Oh, they're manning us. Oh, they're pressing us. Oh, they are doing a 1-2-2 two, two on us, right? They've got to know what's, they got to identify that, and then they can make those adjustments themselves. They become more powerful, more valuable when they can identify it themselves. And so that's one of the things that we're doing here. So, Look at these two problems up here, okay? You can zoom in on this if you'd like. Okay, this one right here, everybody. Solve or simplify, and I want you, when you, when you answer this, I want you to do it as a group, and I want you to bring the roof down, okay? All right, do you understand that? Bring the roof down. Solve or simplify, one, two, three. Simplify. Louder. Simplify. Why? Okay, is this all numbers or a mix of numbers and letters? Mix. It's a mix of numbers and letters. Okay, let's go to this one. Solve or simplify? Simplify. Why? No equal sign. Okay, everybody. All numbers or numbers and letters here? All numbers. All numbers, all right. So this box up here, I'm going to kind of recreate this. Hey, we're being videoed right now. Oh, fun. We have a visitor, Sister Rich. She probably prefer to not be called Sister Rich, but she is Sister Rich. You guys met my wife before, yeah? Tony, the lovely Tony. Okay, very cool. All right, you're on YouTube now. Okay, all right, so check it out. When I am solving problems, I have equal signs. So a solved problem, it has an equal sign. When I am simplifying, do I have equal signs, yes or no? No, I don't, and that's your big identifier right there. And those are the two types of problems in all of algebra. I want you to understand that everything in chapter one, what chapter are we in? We're in chapter one, because the first chapter was chapter R. Okay, everything in chapter one is a simplified problem. Everything in chapter two is a solved problem. And then when we get to three and four and five and six, okay, or three and four and five, we don't have a six. When we get to three and four and five, we'll talk about it. Some of it will be a mix, okay? But right now, you can count on everything you're doing in chapter one will be a simplified problem. We're not finding out what the variable equals. We don't care, we're just cleaning the problem up, okay? So then, in the simplify realm, there's two types of problems, okay? There's two types of simplified problems. And that's 
definitely an overstatement, okay? We're going to see that there's all kinds, but the bottom line is they either have all numbers or they're a mix of numbers and letters. And what do we call letters in algebra? Variables, that's right. Okay, and that's how you're going to identify the problem. Does it have all numbers or does it have numbers and letters? But what is the tool we use? Well, we've already taught you these tools. So what we're doing today, please listen, is we are not learning how to use the tools. We've already learned how to use these tools. You're going to see here in a minute. We're learning how to identify where to use those tools. We're looking at what the defense is throwing at us, and we can make a decision of what offense to use. Okay? All right. When we have all numbers, the tool used is the order of operations. Do we know how to use the order of operations? Say, woo, if you know how. Woo! Yeah, you do. You learned that a while ago, okay? And there are four steps to the order of operations, and it's all in that chart for you. Parentheses, exponents, multiply or divide, add or subtract, right? Brother, Numbers and letters, yes? What about, like, in the problem up here when, like, it's in the parentheses, but you can't combine this? We're going we're gonna to get there. You, hold tight. Hold tight. I love your question, but... Just hang tight here. So numbers and letters, the tool used is distribute parentheses and combine like terms. Now, again, all of this is up. It's in our, it's in our workbook and so nicely written for all of us right there. Okay, do we know how to distribute parentheses? Yes. Yeah. yeah, we just did it in section 1.7, right? If I got, you know, 3 times x minus 7, that's the distributor. It goes to here, 3x, three, 3 times 7, negative 21, right? We know how to do that, yes or no? Yes. 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 Do we know how to combine like terms? Yes. Yeah. If we got 2x plus 3y plus 5x minus 7y, right? We can say 2x and 5x is 7x, and 3y minus 7y is negative 4y. We know how to do that. Agreed? Agreed. Yes. So we know how to use all these tools already. The question is, where do we use them? When do we use them? That's problem identification. That's powerful. And, the, and when you don't do well on a test, it's not usually because you don't know how to use the tool. It's because you don't know what tool to use where. Because we practice all these tools in the homework. You're like, I, I understand the homework, but I just can't do the test well. Well, that's because no one's teaching you how to problem identify. So that's what we're teaching you. Okay? So let's talk about this. Let's come back to the middle board here and look at this. There are three kinds of parentheses that exist in the order of operations or in distributing parentheses. There are the rounded, there are the square bracket, and there are the illustrious but difficult for Brother Rich to draw squiggly brackets. Amen. Squigglies. Okay? Now, absolute value bars behave like parentheses. And so if you see absolute value bars in these problems, you'll treat them like parentheses. When we do the order of operations, we are doing what's inside the parentheses. When we do uh, numbers and letters, we are doing what is being done to the parentheses, what's being done outside of it. We'll understand that here in a moment. So right now, we're going to do these two problems together. We're going to go through all these questions again. We're going to come over to this board. So if you want to come over here, Grace, you sure can. Will somebody read this problem to me, 3a plus 2a? Go. 3a plus 2a. 4a bracket plus 2a. 3a bracket plus 2a. Watch bracket 4a? Plus seven. All right. All right. And then read the other one to me really quick. No? You guys, you shy? You want to be on YouTube making a mistake? Hello? Help me. Negative three inside of brackets. Minus three. Minus four. Four. One seed bracket. Like that? Is that it? All right. Cool. All right. All right. Everybody. Everybody participate. Listen, some of you have already done these two problems. Because you're like, oh, this is cool. I'm going to do these. Okay? That's cool. You can get ahead of the game. But right now, I don't want you to write. I want you to focus and learn, okay? Because I'm going to teach you some little things that might make a difference. All right? Everybody, one, two, three. Solve or simplify? Simplify. Why? No, no equals sign. Okay. All numbers or numbers and letters? Numbers and letters. Okay, so back here, right here, you should have, simpl you should have circled simplify. Why? No equal sign. Write that there. And then you're going to circle numbers and letters. But what is the tool used? What is the tool used? What is the tool used here? Distribute. OK, look up here. It is distribute parentheses comb LT. Right? If you want to go if you want to go shorthand, that's what you can write there. Okay? And that's what you should write on each of these problems. Distribute parentheses combined like terms. All right. 
Yeah, you've written that down. Let's do this together. All eyes up here, okay? These are our tools. Distribute parentheses, okay? Notice, when we distribute parentheses, we're not combining what's inside of it because we can't. We're doing what's being done to it. What's the distributor here? Yeah, that's right. There's a silent one there, and the negative goes with it. And so this goes to here and to here. Agreed? Agreed. And that's going to magically become, I'll make sure people at YouTubeville can, can see this, this negative is going to here. This becomes negative 4, 8, and that negative goes there and becomes negative 7. And the parentheses is now gone. And the rest of this all drops down. The 3a, the plus, and the 2a, they drop down into that step. Do we have any parentheses left? Nope. No. So now we combine like terms. All eyes up here. How many terms are in this algebraic expression right now? Four. 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 Very good. You guys are awesome at this. Okay. I got 3a. I got 2a. I got negative 4a. And now we're going to kick some a. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> All right. What's 3a plus 2a? And 5a minus 4a? It's a. 1a. We just call it a, right? Do we ever write 1a? No, because this is called a simplified problem. If we can get rid of something, that makes it simpler. And one times anything remains the same, so we just call it A minus 7. Done. Yes? If you were to write it as 1A, would it matter on the test or an exam? Um, it's, it, you're taking multiple choice exams, and so it's never going to be written as 1A. It's going to be written as A. And in homework, your graders are going to possibly make a comment. If you keep doing it, they might dock you. Right? Okay. So, yeah. Do you know what the hardest question to answer in all of life is? Hardest question to answer in all of life. What is it? The meaning of life. The meaning of life. Let's hear all your answers. This is Negative quite an entertaining. One. What? Negative one. Negative one? That's the hardest question to answer? No, that's the, that's the key to life. Negative oh, the negative one is the key to life. Okay. I want to know what's the hardest question to answer in all of life? Come on, you guys should have some good ones here. Some hungers. What's that? What makes you happy? What makes you happy? I like that. Hardest question to answer in all of life. I can't believe you guys aren't taking and seizing this moment. Where do babies come from? I told, I told what's that? Where do babies come from? Yeah. Who should I marry? Right? What job should I do? What job should I do? I should I, I had one kid in class like, what to eat? What do I eat? You know, that, that's, in our car that's always like, what do we eat? Where do we go? And we're all debating and stuff, right? Okay. Here's the hardest question to answer in all of life. You ready for this? Am I done? That's the hardest question to answer. Do you know why? Because we're human. We have all these imperfections, and so we never know if what we have done is good enough, if it's accurate, if it's correct, if I've taken it far enough. There was only one who could definitively say, I am done. And those were his final words. It is finished. And that was your Savior, right? And so he was perfect, and he could state that knowing that the work was good enough. It was complete. But for the rest of us, and, and this is a much, much simpler thing and a much less important thing, a stupid algebra problem compared to the atonement or big decisions in our life. But look up here. We ask ourselves, am I done? And if you aren't good at math, and many of you have raised your hands and said you aren't good at math, you're saying, is this enough? Am I done? And so here's the thing that's cool about problem identification and this process up here we can definitively answer this question with confidence if we simply look back at what were our tools used, okay? Was this solve or simplify? Simplify. So, because it's simplify, are we gonna find out what A equals? No. no, we don't give a fetch. So, that's not a problem. So the tool used here was what? What was the tool used? Come back here, what was the tool used? Distribute, Distribute parentheses, combine like terms. So I'll come back here, I'll ask you, do we have any parentheses left in this problem? Any parentheses? No. no. Do we have any like terms? Nope. I am done. Boom! Exclamation mark. With confidence. Okay? Let's do this problem quickly. All right? Everybody. Everybody. Solve or simplify? One, two, three. Simplify. Why? No equals sign. Very good. Okay? All numbers are numbers and letters? All numbers. Okay? And what is the tool we use when we have all numbers? That's right. It's the order of operations. Okay? The order of ops. And you can say that right there if you want to do that. Sounds, that's what you're going to write for this. Okay? All right. Now, in the order of operations, we have four steps. Parentheses, uh, exponents, multiply or divide, and add or subtract. Agreed? Yep. Okay. So let's quickly do this problem together. Six 
bracket, 9 minus parentheses, 3 minus 4, bracket. All right, so we have parentheses, but we have two kinds. So we have to do, remember, we do the rounded parentheses first. So our first job up here is to take 3 minus 4. What does 3 minus 4 make? It makes negative 1, right? So that's all we're doing. We are not distributing. Distributing is taking what's outside and putting it in. That's when we have a mix of numbers and letters. When we have order of operations, we just do what's inside the parentheses. That's what it says up on our chart. So everything else then drops down. So the 6 and the bracket and the 9 and the minus <clears throat> and the bracket all drop down. Now, are we going to leave that like that? No. No, that's kind of like a brain wedgie. Who's ever had a wedgie? Raise your hand if you've ever had a wedgie. Okay, the rest of you are lying. Everybody's had a wedgie. I've even seen you guys. Okay, you all have wedgies. Now, sometimes brain wedgies, brain wedgies are when our brain looks at something and goes, eh, it's uncomfortable. It's just like a real wedgie. It's uncomfortable, right? And so we're going to put a little parentheses around that. And then people start freaking out on me and say, I thought we got rid of that parentheses. That's not a parentheses anymore. That's a separator. This separates the operation from the sign, right? It's just temporary. So that we don't have a brain wedgie. We cool? Mm -hmm. Yes? Raise your hand if you've never had a wedgie. Raise your hand. Everybody. Guys, I'm telling you, honesty. Honesty here. Okay? We're like family. We've got to be honest. I'm messing with you. Okay. Six. Bracket. Minus a negative? Ten. Plus. This becomes nine plus one. Nine plus one is? Ten. And six times ten is? Sixty. Sixty. All right. You guys good? Yeah. Yes. So the first bracket, will we ever see it on the outside? Oh, no. Like no, no, no. So what's cool is, and we learned this back in the R chapter. When we learned how to do these three, we, we had a thing called innermost first. Right. And the rounded is always, always in, this, in the innermost. And then the, in the square, and then the square, they build outward. Right. It'll always work that way. Cool. Good. cool. Okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to break up into groups possibly. We'll talk about that. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to do these next four problems. Okay? And so, Grace, if you want to just get a picture of that, and then after that, we can pause. You can pause the video. Hey, guys. So you can do one of two things right now. You can, um, you can continue to work if you feel confident, or you can watch me do these two, which I think would be a really good idea, and then you can just write down what we do here in class. So I ask everybody, is this a solve or a simplify? Why? No equal sign. Uh, all numbers or a mix of numbers and letters? Numbers. So the tool used? Order of, operations. order of operations. Very good. And so if the order of operations, and we've learned this, when we have stuff on top and stuff on bottom, the first thing we do is we do what's on top. So we take the absolute value of 3 minus 5 minus the absolute value of 7 minus 13. It's being squared. And we follow the order of operations. Now remember, absolute value acts like parentheses. And parentheses in the order of operations comes first. And so 3 minus 5 is what? Negative two. It's negative 2. And negative 2 is being squared, but the absolute value of negative 2 is the parentheses. So absolute value of negative 2 is what? It's 2. So 2 is now being squared, and that makes it 4. The minus comes along for the ride. This parentheses here, absolute value of 7 minus 13 is what? Negative 6. Six. Six. It's absolute value of negative 6, which is what? Six. It's 6. So 4 minus 6 ends up being negative 2. So negative 2 is on top, right? On the bottom. On the bottom, we have the absolute value of 12 minus 9 uh, plus, let's do that right there, uh, the absolute value of 11 minus 14. Again, absolute values behave like parentheses, so 12 minus 9 is 3. And the absolute value of 3 is 3. And the plus comes down. And 11 minus 14 is what? Three. It's negative 3. And the absolute value of negative 3 is? And 3 plus 3 is 6. And then we learn in this, in this process, we put the top over the bottom, which is negative 2 over 6, and we simplify it, which makes? What is that? One Negative one third. Say woo if you got that one right. Woo. That's awesome. Very awesome. Okay. So this one's all about being thorough and being organized. And we talked about, right? Look up here. We do these and then we combine like terms. And then we do these and then we combine like terms. And then we do these and then we combine like terms. So let's do the rounded parentheses. Everybody help me. My distributor here is what? My distributor here is what? 8, and it goes to here and to here, so this makes 8x minus, help me, 24. 24, okay? What's my distributor here? It goes to here and to here. This makes what? 12x minus 8. Very good. Everything else is coming on down. 
the four, the squiggly, the square, the plus, the nine, the square, the minus, the square bracket, the plus, the six, the square bracket, and the squiggly, they all drop down. So all I've done is taken care of, look, I've taken care of these, agreed? And they've dropped into here. But again, can I combine 8x with that 12x right now? No. Not right now. Too many barriers with all these parentheses. <laughs> but inside this parenthetic world, what can I combine quickly? Negative 24 and 9, which make? Negative 15. Negative 15. Agreed. Okay, so this ends up being 4, squiggly, square, 8x, minus 15, square, minus, square. What am I, combine, what am I combining over here? Negative 8 and 6 make what? Negative 2. 12x minus 2, square bracket, squiggly. All right? So look at, I combined my, I, I, sorry, I distributed my round of parentheses, and I combined the remaining like terms. What are my distributors for my square parentheses? What's this distributor? One, one. It's 1. Not 4. 4 is outside the squiggly. It's 1. And 1 times anything is the? Same. So we just drop that down. So the 4 and the squiggly, and we have 8x minus 15. What is my distributor here? It is the minus, and it goes to here and to here. So this being becomes 12x minus 2. Negative 12x minus, or sorry, plus 2. Agreed? Agreed. Yep. And so now we have the squiggly bracket. So we have distributed this. Now we need to combine like terms in here before we put the 4 in. It would be best to combine like terms. What are my like terms? Quickly. I got 8x. Is this an x term? Is this? It is. 8x minus 12x makes what? It makes negative 4x. And negative 15 and positive 2 make what? Negative 13. Negative 13. So I combine my like terms. Now my only distributor left is the 4. 4 times negative 14 is negative 16x. 4 times negative 13 is negative 52. Okay, and then I look to combine like terms. Do I have any like terms here? No. Do I have any more parentheses? Am I done? Yes. I am done! Exclamation mark. Say woo if you got that right. <laughs> woo. That's a hard problem. It's hard. Wait, wait, wait. Is the math hard? Is the math hard? No. Yes. No. no. We know how to distribute parentheses and combine like terms. Is staying organized challenging? Yes. Yes. But you all told me a while ago you can get good at being organized, right? Notice what we do. Look up here. Write the problem. One, two, three, four steps to get to the answer. This is the price to pay for success. Pay that price. Be thorough, be organized, you'll do well. Don't try to do this crap in your head. Write it all out. We cool? All right, that's it for today. Listen, on Friday, we will be reviewing for the test. Your visual chart and your practice test are published in Canvas, and you can begin them if you get this done. I am going to open the test tomorrow, but Friday, class is mandatory. We're going to review for the test. You guys cool? All right. Have a good one. We'll see you then. Go. Okay. For those of you at home on YouTube, sorry, we are doing these two problems last. We already did the other two problems first, but we're going to jump into this really quick here. So... Um, what type of problem is this? Solve or simplify? It is a simplify. Why? It has no equal sign. Um, we are going to uh, ask you again, is this all numbers or a mix of numbers and letters? It's a mix of numbers and letters. Therefore, because it's a mix, we're going to use distribute parentheses combined like terms. Uh, the first parentheses is the rounded parentheses. Our distributor is the 6 and the 5. This has to go to here and to here. This goes to here and to here. This ends up being 6x plus 24. And over here, 5x minus 40. So everything else drops down. The square bracket, the minus the 12. The square bracket, the minus the square bracket, the plus the 14. So at home, you should have already done these, and now you're just checking your work along with me to make sure you did this right. We talked about how... Uh, we want to distribute parentheses and then combine like terms. And then we will distribute the square brackets and then we will combine like terms. Rather than distribute the rounded parentheses and then look at the distributors for these, which we could do, and just distribute parentheses all at once, we're going to distribute our rounded parentheses and then combine like terms. Now, can we combine 6x with 5x? No because they're separated by these parenthetic worlds. But within this parenthetic world, what are our like terms? Yes, they're 24 and negative 12. So this ends up being 6x plus 12,
because 24 and negative 12 make 12 in this bracket, minus, and over here our like terms are negative 4 and 14. So this makes 5x minus 26. So what is, my, what is my distributor, right? What's my distributor here? It's just 1. 1 times anything remains the same, so this is 6x plus 12. What's my distributor here? It's the negative, which we can call a negative 1 going to here and here, which makes negative 5x plus 26. We've now <laughs> distributed parentheses. Then we combine like terms. Now we've distributed the square brackets. Now we need to have our final combination of like terms. How many terms do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, 6x and negative 5x make x. 12 and 26 make 38. I asked the question to the class, what's the hardest question to answer in life? It is the, the, the question of, you know, am I done? Okay? And so, how do we know if we're done here? Well, do we know what x is? No, but we don't care because it's not, it's not an equal sign. We're not solving for x. But do we have any parentheses? Do we have any like terms? Do we have any parentheses here? We do not. Do we have any more like terms? We don't. So we can definitively say, I am done. Going to this problem right here. We're cameraing right here. Please don't walk in front. Sorry. You're good. Okay. Just hang tight somewhere else. So really fast on these problems right here, do I have solve or simplify? It is simplify because why? There's no equal sign. All numbers are numbers and letters. All numbers. Okay. What is the tool we use? It is the order of operations. And we can write that on there as we stated. And the order of operations, we're going to do our parentheses. Uh, we're going to do our exponents. We're going to do our uh, multiply or divide, and we're going to do our add or subtract, okay? We're cameraing right here. Don't walk in front, okay? All right, so super fast. Um, we have our parentheses, the 5 to the third, the plus, the 26, the times 71, the minus, they all drop down. In this parenthetic world, I have to obey the order of operations. And so what do I do first? I multiply. 25 times 3 is 75, so I end up here with 16 plus 75. And then 16 plus 75 makes 91. And so this ends up being 5 to the third plus 26 times 71 minus 91. 5 to the third is 5 times 5 times 5, which ends up being 125. And that is plus 26 times 71 minus 91. Uh, and then I'm going to multiply 26 times 71, which, does anybody have a calculator? You want to rip that out for me? That becomes 125 plus 18, 46. 46, very good, minus 91, you guys are awesome, 125 plus 18, 46 makes 1971, minus 91, I believe that that makes 1880, yep. and there we go, we are done, so good luck, we'll see you next time.